Hello everyone, in this video I will be reviewing the ICO for the project play to live uh, Let me start out by saying this is a sponsored review So I've been asked by the team to review this project and the ICO uh, But with that said, everything is of my own opinion uh, Using my own judgment, nothing has been predetermined And the rating I give it at, at the end is going to be shared live in this video it hasn't been pre-shared with the team okay so with that said let me get started uh so what is play to live looking at just the screen right now you got you get a sense of the idea that this is uh with esports okay um as you guys know in asia and also in russia many parts of europe um and now it's getting more popular in the u.s esports is huge and it's growing okay amazon paid almost a billion dollars for twitch those of you guys that know twitch it's all about e esport streaming and that's what play to live is all about it's creating a decentralized version or platform for e-streaming, e-sports streaming. So they're go they're gonna go head on with Twitch, or at least that's what they want to do. Now, um, so what what separates them really, right? Why do you need another Twitch, or why do you need a decentralized Twitch? Okay, so their biggest thing is they're gonna differentiate themselves through incentives. For the first time, they're incentivizing viewers. Okay, those that aren't even streaming anything, those that are just simply watching. They're giving five different ways for viewers to get incentivized. Okay, so that's huge. That's a big thing, first in the industry. Second thing is for the streamers, they're making it a lot more easier for a streamer to also get paid for their content. So they say that they have up to 11 ways to incentivize a streamer to be on, to use to use the platform versus five that Twitch offers. Okay, so that's the biggest thing that they're advertising and why they're different. Because using blockchain technology, they're able to use their tokens and incentivize both the users and the streamers and also be able to convert that into fiat currency that people can withdraw out. So it's it's definitely a new thing. They're utilizing these tokens as a utility, um, and they think it's going to just change the whole landscape and really become a true competitor to uh, to Twitch. Okay, um, so let's go through website. Let's go look at the one pager, the white the white paper. Uh, the team members and kind of the token details. So let's look through and then toward that I'll give you a recap and my overall uh, rating. All right, so on this page is pretty clear right up front. Okay, you, you you look at this, you know what it's about, which is really good. Okay, I've I've seen a lot of ICOs, I've seen a lot of web pages. You go on there and you're looking at it, you really have no idea what you're looking at or what they're trying to do, what they're trying to sell, what 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 they're in. It's pretty simple, okay? They tell you. It's a streaming platform right in the first sign, the streaming platform for gamers and esports fans, all right? So it's right up front. You know uh, you know what you're getting into by looking at this. Uh, the pre-sale the pre actually starts tomorrow, so I'm releasing this a day beforehand. You get a 5% bonus. Now, right up front, they tell you, they give you all the information. Uh, they've obviously already been rated by ICO Box. They put their one pager in six different languages, white paper in six different languages, um, a little bit more information, risk factors, privacy, um, simple agreement. Everything is laid out for you, okay? Uh, just so you know, this is a Russian-based company. All the, all the founders and team and everyone is Russian. Um, but they're they're not just catering to to Russia. They're catering to the worldwide. Obviously, I think it shows that they're serious because they have six different you know uh, languages for a one page or white paper and the market overview. All right. So here's the project. Uh, so they're kind of giving you idea of you know the main challenges within the esports industry, right? But really. Uh, what what is it about? Okay, so this is what it's about. So now they're telling you that you know what, they're they're actually catering to three crowds, not just two. 
So the viewer, obviously anyone that's interested in watching esports competition, uh, it's extremely popular. Um, like I said, it's getting more popular in the U.S., but extremely popular in Russia, especially in Asia, such as uh, South Korea, Taiwan, China. Um, and then it's also popular in uh, Europe, too, but it's definitely spreading over here. Um, so for the viewers, you know, there's more than five ways or it's actually five ways the viewers can actually watch, enjoy themselves and also earn money while doing it. So that's the first of its kind. The streamer has 11 ways to make money while streaming. And now they're introducing a third party, which is the tournament organizers can now also organize tournaments within the play to live platform and actually collect funds with it. Okay, and actually, you know what, can get, uh, can do advertising, can get advertisements on board. They have, um, they, they could do a whole bunch of stuff with the platform in terms of organizing um, the tournament, right? So it's, it's definitely a new thing they're trying to, to implement. All right, so again here, some highlights of some of the things they can do. I'm going to skip over this. Some of this is marketing, but you know, you, you, you guys, I, I, I do want you guys, uh, those of you guys that are interested, definitely read through this. Here's a complicated way of how, how their economic model works. All right, and I'll go through some of this uh, in the white paper, uh, and I'll sum it up really easily for you guys, okay? Um, so let's let's go down here and look at the team okay now i will say this most of you guys watching this will never heard of these people okay for for most part they're from russia and they haven't really worked in big uh blockchain companies that you guys might have heard of before okay but let me go over to these top guys obviously um let's see here we go alexi he's the ceo and founder um I'm impressed with these guys. Okay, so let me just show you. Let's go. Let's go all the way down here. You'll see that you know what he he found it. He's obviously an entrepreneur. He's found a lot of stuff, and he's been a CEO of stuff, right? But really, I'll skip over that. That's where, like, towards the end of his career, you'll see that he's worked in a lot of places that deal with gaming and streaming, and that's what you want to see from a CEO that's trying to come out with the esports platform. All right. Um, so he worked at um, let's see, CIS Connect. Um, it's it's mainly for video games and IT companies. Um, let's see. Then he he worked at the GSL TV, which is a tournament platform from esports. Then he got in. He's a board member for a couple months for you know some kind of universal cryptocurrency in the game industry. Obviously, that didn't work out. Then he became CEO of this company, Game Show, which is the largest, uh, the first and largest esports tournament operator in Russia um, that had held over 35 esports events, visited $500, by $500,000 in the last six years. And then he founded Play to Live. Okay, so he's definitely a serial entrepreneur, but then he's also been in this industry for a while, which is probably why he wanted to start this company. That's a really, really, really positive thing. Now, you know, the experience doesn't stop just at Alexei. Um, Dimitri, who is the COO, you look at it the same thing. Besides uh, Play to Live, he was a director at, at, um, at was it, Mail.ru, which is, he was responsible for strategic development and implementation across games, VK.com, and so forth. So definitely has experience with esports. Then he was, um, uh, what is it? He was a managing director uh, for the, the third biggest internet portal on Russian internet. Um, here he was a COO of an online game publisher. Um, so you can see, right? And then here he was the VP of, um, of, uh, this company, which also deals with MMORPG, which is massive multi -on online player, massive multiplayer online RPG. So basically his whole career, um, a lot of experience, I shouldn't say a whole career, but a lot of the experience from past few years all have to do with gaming or online gaming or internet again a big thing a big positive 
for Dimitri. Now going back to Ina, who is I don't know I forgot Ina's positions. Um, CBDO. Okay. Uh, so basically, he's the chief bus chief business de development director. All right. So she was also working at. Uh, this agency, which uh, this one's not so much uh, internet or gaming, but here uh, she was <clears throat> she was head of business development at Wargaming.net. Obviously, that is a gaming company, and she she dealt a lot with esports and media. Um, before that, uh, she worked, you know, for. She worked for this company, Internet Retail Solutions, which did licensing for Angry Birds, which is, you know, I think most of you guys have heard of Angry Birds, a very popular game from iOS and Android. Um, but so it seems like she also has a lot of experience because she was at least with Wargaming for four and a half years and then this. So, um, so yeah, so she also has experience. And then let's look at this person, uh, Orkan. I hope I'm not butchering that too much. So it's the CTO, and he's been CTO and project lead and CEO for a lot of places. Um, looking at his last previous job, he's a CTO, um, and that was for a brand new blockchain powered payment product. Okay, so blockchain technology, which is good. Then he was a technical manager of this company. Um, I don't, I don't know what company that is. Let's see. So he managed all aspects of operations and engineering. Um, he led, uh, led, yeah, he led hosting the cloud. So basically, this guy is just true, like CTO, someone that has gotten his hands dirty in terms of leading teams, leading infrastructure operations. So not so much on gaming and online, but definitely he's had experience as a CTO, a true CTO that's led teams, led projects. And that's what you wanna see, right? So those are like the top guys that I, I looked at. And then if you go through their page, for their advisory board. Now, some of these guys, again, advisory board, these aren't the biggest advisors that you hear of, right? It's not It's not like the biggest blockchain guys that you you hear like the Ethereum founders or or uh, Roger Veer or any of those guys or Charlie Shrem, like those guys that you don't, you, don't, you know, you hear about a lot, but not, not here. But if you look at these um, the advisors, they're pretty impressive too. Like this Canyon, which I've never heard of before, but he, he's involved a lot of uh, TV, um, Imba TV, Azubi TV. So I'm assuming that he's involved in a lot of, you know, content um, publishers and uh, and he has a lot of distribution. Um, so he, you know, he's probably a really good advisor. You look at David Drake, who's involved with the, some of the, these blockchain technologies. Um, so obviously he's part of a v, uh, he's part of a, a hedge fund, and then you go down. You, you got a lot of these companies or a lot of these advisors that work with either gaming or blockchain or invested in other blockchains, and it goes on and on. So um, so this is extremely extremely positive in my opinion. Um, the team is very strong, although these aren't guys that you have heard of before, nor are the advisors probably people you heard of before, but they all bring a wealth of knowledge and they have a lot of experience in esports and gaming, which is what you want to see. Now, this roadmap is a little bit different, and I'll show you the one that's in the white paper because that's much better. This is kind of roadmap in terms of how much money they're making and what kind of um, development they can do based on the money they collect. But that's a little bit different. All right, so let me scroll through here, the token sale details, okay? So overall, they're gonna have 1.3 billion tokens. Um, not too bad. Uh, so tokens are LUC, it is Ethereum based. Uh, they're gonna have a hard, hard cap of 30 million. Um, the pre-sale starts tomorrow. They're selling each uh, LUC token for five cents. They go accept 
these kind of currencies for it soft cap at 3 million they say if you don't reach 3 million they will just refund everyone and close the project so they are looking for at least 3 million to get started minimum amount to get in is 0.1th which is only a hundred dollars um so that all looks pretty good how they go use it over 62 percent over 62 percent is sold in the open market which is great I love companies that actually distribute more than 50% because now you're starting to see a company get greedy. They're holding on more and more. Um, and some companies are only selling like 30% or 40% of their total distribution. And that's not what you want to see. You don't want to see the team control so much. So selling by selling 62.5, I think they're, they're being generous. So that's really good. They have some reserve, reserve funds, which is fine. Founders and projects is 10%. Partners of the project, advisory board, and bounty. So this is all pretty standard. This 62.5% is actually a pro in my mind. And then how they go distribute it, you know, they actually break it down pretty well. They even break it down like legal fees, outsourcing, CDN maintenance fees. You know, most of these aren't broken down on um, and a lot of ICOs. If you, if you see it, they just kind of clump it together like operations fee or something. Um, they don't actually break it down to this level, which is really good. And uh, um, it's good to know where the money is going, right? Um, so here's a, here's a short FAQ and I think this really boils it down because sometimes when you look at a project, you don't quite understand or you get it and you're like, well, why do you need this? Right? Like the biggest question people will look at with this ICO is why do you need another Twitch or why, why would I use this over Twitch? Right? And that's the very, very first question that they put up here. And they explain it really is because of the way they're incentivizing both viewers and uh, streamers. Now, I'm going to mention something that they don't really hit hard on, which I feel like is a mistake on their part. They actually have a hidden gem that they're not talking about a lot. And I will bring that up um, after we go through here. So here's the here's the one pager. They kind of outline it. Um, I think they kind of held their ICO back because most of this says 2017 and we're in 2018. But they're they're just saying you know they kind of stress some of the things that you know by by next year the you know the number of people that's going to be watching esports go only go up. You know basically it's going to show that everything is going higher and higher and higher. Right, the esports. Is not dying and in fact it's going the opposite direction esports is getting more and more popular every uh every year and twitch which basically you know controls 80 percent of the market and that that's who they're going after all right and youtube gaming is 14 percent and then a few others obviously they have a long way to go okay a long long way to go um but you know what they're they're trying to go for the big dog so good for them and we'll see what happens um, some of this was covered, you know, like this was on a web page already. This is on a web page. The team um, is here and also on um, on the white paper and on the web page. All right, so white paper is enormous. Okay, seventy one pages. Um, I'm gonna highlight a few things that I think is really important. But those of you guys that are interested, definitely look through here. But seventy one pages. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, but it's a lot of good information. Um, so I want to stop here at page 16. These are the five ways for a user to make money while watching, okay, which is very different. One is advertisement. And basically, for a number of ads that you see, you can get paid for it. So that's a new concept with blockchain, right? Is if, you, if you go on YouTube right now, and you're watching this video that I'm doing, and you, you, if you happen to see ads, you don't get paid for that, right? You don't get paid uh, to view ads. That's why people use ad blockers, they close it. On this platform, you actually will get paid for viewing ads. You will get paid for voting, okay? And these votes could be the, uh, the streamers, okay, from the streamers or the organizers of tournaments. So just by voting and participating, you get, uh, you earn something. Um, they have something very unique where you can share your internet channel, okay, to save bandwidth on their part, okay, so that because this is blockchain technology, you're able to, everything is decentralized, so there's not from a common server, so they're making it so that if you happen to utilize your bandwidth and share it out 
to other people watching, you actually make money from that, which is very, very unique for, a, you know, that's the only way you can do it with a decentralized model. With a centralized model like YouTube, you're not able to do that. You could perform tasks by streamers. So this is something different that they're introducing. Streamers can actually put out things and ask viewers to do. Um, and then also, this is the big thing that they don't really stress on, and it's huge, because they allow betting and gambling, okay? So now, this is completely new. There might be some legalities around this, especially in the country that you live in, okay? But... The whole premise of another um, ICO I covered, I talked about, and a coin that's out um, that I really like is uh, Unicoin Gold, okay, which is basically in this realm where they allow betting of esports tournaments. And their whole thing is they put it up front and they say, you know what, the, you know, the biggest thing to our platform basically um, is this betting and gambling portion, which play to live is also making it um, making it a feature. So they don't really talk about this, right? On the web page, on the one pager, um, they don't really bring this up, but this is a huge thing. And I think uh, it's a mistake for them not to highlight this unless they're trying to cover on purpose because they're trying to figure out the legalities of this. But I think this is huge. Imagine now, right? Imagine, um, being able to actually if you're watching a tournament being able to bet to see which side wins right that's exciting you know that's really exciting it adds a whole nother layer to it um so yeah so that's um really big thing in my opinion so so these are the five things that that um that viewers can utilize and make money which is great now for the streamers it's even better so they actually compare youtube twitch and play to live in terms of how streamers will make money. So advertising, channel subscriptions, um, donations, those are obvious, okay? Um, purchase of game, games at partner services, Twitch offers that, but you know, rewards within the platform, exchange for uh, drawing prizes, betting, uh, total Zador, I don't know what that is, crowdfunding for, for streams, um, so you can also crowdfund, crowdfund, which is uh, different and unique, very unique. Um, you could do interactive tasks. Yeah, so that's one of the tasks that that, that uh, we saw up here, right? And um, yeah, so and you get all the traditional ones too. So they're they're layering all these different things on top of what's already available. So Twitch already has five, and now they have up to eleven, which is huge. Um, this crowdfunding is very, very fascinating too. So for people that want to start their own stream or start their own channel and they want to come up with something different, they can actually crowdfund through play to live which is awesome. Awesome idea. All right. Um, and then skipping through, I'm going to go over here on page 55 because this is actually the true roadmap, right? Like the other one on their webpage was kind of highlighting steps in terms of what they're going to be spending on um, this is the actual roadmap so the beta launch the beta version of this it really isn't going to come out until q3 okay and then the full um the full-fledged like product will be done in q4 okay so you do have you know in q3 it, it really depends it can be you know anywhere from seven eight months all the way to ten months so it really depends it's not that far off but it is a little bit farther off Okay, and up here, uh, yeah, no, we saw this already. Yeah, so that's the two things I wanted to highlight from the, the white paper. Um, I think it's, so far, everything is looking good. And um, so, yeah, let me, let me now do my recap because uh, pretty much that's, what I wanted to go over. And so far, everything looks good. So let me do a recap and give you the pros and cons. All right, so play to live recap. Um, pros, there's a lot of pros, okay? It's in, you know, they're in the hot esports industry, which is only growing in the US and the North America, but really uh, extremely popular in Asia, popular in Russia, and it's popular in Europe, and it's only going to get more popular. So they're in that space. They create a new incentives for viewers, the first time in history for this kind of platform. Um, new incentives for streamers, and that's always good because the more ways streamers can make money, uh, the more that you're going to attract, right? Um, 
also they're extremely they have extremely strong team uh and advisors in my opinion okay um if i had to rate a one through ten i would rate it a nine probably not a ten because a ten would be saying um you know what if you had t a team that worked in one of the big top 10 big cap coins out there so that would be different but if you you know i went through their experience they actually all have a lot of experience with gaming or esports which is really good working product i forgot to show you guys this they actually have a site okay p2l.tv where they already have um, a lot of the pre-recorded stuff the tournament stuff that's on here okay it looks like it's in beta um but you could definitely go in it and look at it and they already you know they they, they already have like different commentary like a russian chinese korean japanese english and spanish so they do have this already which is really really good uh if nothing else this is at least demonstrates that they're they're able to do this this is these are rebroadcasting though not not actually live ones that live tournaments go on but you know that they're gonna start implementing all these things and having live tournaments, and then it's gonna bet you know explode and be huge. All right, all right. So what are the cons? So there's very few. Okay, number one is they are building this on Ethereum, and my concerns about Ethereum is right now it cannot hold, it cannot handle load. Okay, we have seen with CryptoKitties, um, if you have a lot of people on the platform, it will kill the Ethereum network. The saving grace is the beta product and the full product is coming Q3 and Q4. And we know that Ethereum is working very, very hard to try to fix this, right? And there's uh, off-chain solutions like Raiden, which helps with the transactions, which will help the overall transaction speed. But, you know, Ethereum is looking at Plasma and different things that go speed up the number of transactions it can have. So that's a con to me because... It's, it's not really a con because almost every company that's coming out their own blockchain is built on Ethereum and you can't fault them for that because it's definitely the biggest one, the biggest platform everyone uses. However, we know that Ethereum has a scaling issue. So only time will tell if they can fix it before this gets released because if this gets released and you have millions upon millions of users on there using it, it's going to cause Ethereum to slow down um, if they haven't fixed the scaling issue. Another thing is the beta release in Q3. It's not that far off, but it is. It's not something that they already um, have in place, and it's in beta. And then the, the main, you know, the main products will come out in, in a few months. You definitely have to wait. You have to definitely wait at least six, seven, or eight months before the beta comes out, and then you have to wait a few more months until the full product release. But outside of that, I really didn't see any other cons to this project. Um, I gotta say, you know, let me go over the score. I'm giving this project a 4.75 out of 5. Um, I gotta say, I've looked at a lot of ICOs and I rated a lot of ICOs. Um, today, this is the highest rated ICO I have done. And I can't, you know what? It's only because I can't, I, I knocked it off a little bit because of the ethereum and the timing of the uh, the beta but outside of that there's really nothing that i see that really makes me hesitant about this project all right so i'm seeing this from you know a, a group of people and it's a large team that really knows what they're doing um they're in an industry that's very hot they're introducing incentives which is you know that's not seen in this space um and they have a working product, um, and and basically, and they're, they're they don't highlight it. They don't realize they have a gem of a product or a feature, and that's betting. I think betting in esports is huge. All right, so th they got all these great things, and the negatives. There's really not that much other than I think uh, there's some scaling concerns on Ethereum. Um, there is, uh, of course, the timeline in terms of when the beta and the the main. Uh, product comes out, but outside of that, I, I see very little that uh, that I'm that uh, that's holding me back from recommending this ICO. So there you have it. This is my review of Play to Live, and uh, I'm giving it 4.75 out of five stars. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye bye. Very fascinating too. So for people that want to start their own stream or start their own channel, and they want to come up with something different, they could actually crowdfund. 
through play to live, which is awesome. Awesome idea. All right. Um, and then skipping through, I'm going to go over here on page 55 because this is actually the true roadmap, right? Like the other one on their web page was kind of highlighting steps in terms of what they're going to be spending on. Um, this is the actual roadmap. So the beta launch, the beta version of this, it really isn't going to come out until Q3. Okay. And then the full um, the full fledged like product will be done in Q4. Okay. So you do have, you know, in Q3, it, it really depends. It can be, you know, anywhere from seven, eight months all the way to 10 months. So it really depends. It's not that far off, but it is a little bit farther off. Okay. And up here, uh, yeah, well, no, we saw this already. Yeah. So that's the two things I want to highlight from the, the white paper. Um, I think it's so far everything is looking good and um so yeah let me let me now do my recap because uh pretty much that's what i wanted to go over and so far everything looks good so let me do a recap and give you the pros and cons all right so play to live recap um pros there's a lot of pros okay it's in you know they're in the hot esports industry which is only growing in the u.s and the north america but really are extremely popular in asia popular in russia and it's popular in europe and it's only going to get more popular so they're in that space they create a new incentives for viewers the first time in history for this kind of platform um new incentives for streamers and that's always good because the more ways streamers can make money uh the more that you're going to attract right um also they're extremely they have extremely strong team uh and advisors in my opinion okay um if i had to rate a one through ten i would rate it a nine probably not a ten because a ten would be saying um you know what if you had t a team that worked in one of the big top ten big cap coins out there so that would be different but if you you know i went through their experience they actually all have a lot of experience with gaming or esports which is really good working product i forgot to show you guys this they actually have a site okay p2l.tv where they already have um, a lot of the pre-recorded stuff the tournament stuff that's on here okay it looks like it's in beta um but you could definitely go in it and look at it and they already you know they, they they already have like different commentary like a russian chinese korean japanese english and spanish so they do have this already which is really really just saying you know they kind of stress some of the things that you know by by next year the you know the number of people that's going to be watching esports go only go up you know basically it's going to show that everything is going higher and higher and higher right the esports is not dying and in fact it's going the opposite direction esports is getting more and more popular every uh every year and twitch which basically you know controls 80 percent of the market and that that's who they're going after all right and then youtube gaming is 14 percent, and then a few others obviously they have a long way to go okay a long long way to go um but you know what they're they're trying to go for the big dog so good for them and we'll see what happens um some of this was covered you know like this was on a web page already this is on a web page the team um is here and also on um on the white paper and on the web page all right so white paper is enormous okay 71 pages um i'm gonna highlight a few things that i think is really important but those of you guys that are interested definitely look through here but 71 pages wow that's a lot Okay, but it's a lot of good information. Um, so I want to stop here at page 16. These are the five ways for a user to make money while watching, okay, which is very different. One is advertisement. And basically, for a number of ad ads that you see, you could get paid for it. So that's a new concept with blockchain, right? Is if, you, if you go on YouTube right now, and you're watching this video that I'm doing, and you, you, if you happen to see ads, you don't get paid for that, right? You don't get paid uh, to view ads. That's why people use ad blockers, they close it. On this platform, you actually will get paid for viewing ads. You will get paid for voting, okay? And these votes could be the, uh, the streamers, okay, from the streamers or the organizers of tournaments. So just by voting and participating, you get, uh, you earn something. 
um, they have something very unique where you can share your internet channel okay to save bandwidth on their part okay so that because this is blockchain technology you're able to everything is decentralized so there's not come from a common server so they're making it so that if you happen to utilize your bandwidth and share it out to other people watching you actually make money from that which is very very unique for a you know that's the only way you can do it with a decentralized model with a centralized model like youtube you're not able to do that you could perform tasks by streamers so this is something different that they're introducing streamers can actually put out things and ask viewers to do um and then also this is the big thing that they don't really stress on and it's huge because they allow betting and gambling okay popular in russia and it's popular in europe and it's only going to get more popular so they're in that space they create a new incentives for viewers the first time in history for this kind of platform um new incentives for streamers and that's always good because the more ways streamers can make money uh the more that you're going to attract right um also they're extremely they have extremely strong team uh and advisors in my opinion okay um, if I had to rate it 1 through 10, I would rate it a 9. Probably not a 10 because a 10 would be saying, um, you know what, if you had t a team that worked in one of the big top 10 big cap coins out there. So that would be different. But, if you, you know, I went through their experience. They actually all have a lot of experience with gaming or esports, which is really good. Working product. I forgot to show you guys this. They actually have a site, okay, p2l.tv where they already have um, a lot of the pre-recorded stuff, the tournament stuff that's on here, okay? It looks like it's in beta, um, but you could definitely go in it and look at it, and they already, you know, they, they, they already have, like, different commentary, like a Russian, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, English, and Spanish. So they do have this already, which is really, really good. Uh, if nothing else, this is at least demonstrates that they're they're able to do this. This is these are rebroadcasting though, not not actually live ones that live tournaments go on. But you know that they're gonna start implementing all these things and having live tournaments, and then it's gonna bet you know explode and be huge. All right, all right. So what are the cons? So there's very few. Okay, number one is they are building this on Ethereum and. My concerns about Ethereum is right now it cannot hold, it cannot handle load. Okay, we have seen with CryptoKitties, um, if you have a lot of people on the platform, it will kill the Ethereum network. The saving grace is the beta product and the full products is coming Q3 and Q4. And we know that Ethereum is working very, very hard to try to fix this. Right, and there's uh, off-chain solutions like Raiden, which helps with the transactions, which will help the overall transaction speed. But you know, Ethereum is looking at Plasma and different things that go speed up the number of transactions it can have. So that's a con to me because it's it's not really a con because almost every company that's coming out their own blockchain is built on Ethereum, and you can't fault them for that because it's definitely the biggest one, the biggest platform everyone uses. However, we know that Ethereum has a scaling issue, so only time will tell if they can fix it before this gets released, because if this gets released and you have millions upon millions of users on there using it, it's going to cause Ethereum to slow down um, if they haven't fixed the scaling issue. Another thing is the beta release in Q3. It's not languages, white paper in six different languages, um, a little bit more information, risk factors, privacy, um, simple agreement, everything is laid out for you okay uh just so you know this is a russian based company all the all the founders and team and everyone is russian um but they're they're not just catering to to russia they're catering to the worldwide obviously i think it shows that they're serious because they have six different you know uh languages for a one page or white paper and the market overview all right so here's the project uh so they're kind of giving you an idea of you know the main challenges within the esports industry right but really uh what what is it about okay so this is what it's about so now they're telling you that you know what they're they're actually catering to three crowds not just two so the viewer obviously anyone that's interested in watching esports competition uh it's extremely popular 
Um, like I said, it's getting more popular in the U.S., but extremely popular in Russia, especially in Asia, such as uh, South Korea, Taiwan, China. Um, and then it's also popular in uh, Europe, too. But it's definitely spreading over here. Um, so for the viewers, you know, there's more than five ways or it's actually five ways the viewers can actually watch, enjoy themselves and also earn money while doing it. So that's the first of its kind. The streamer has 11 ways to make money while streaming. And now they're introducing a third party, which is the tournament organizers. Can now also organize tournaments within the Play to Live platform and actually collect funds with it. Okay, and actually, you know what, can get, uh, can do advertising, can get advertisements on board. They have, um, they, they could do a whole bunch of stuff with the platform in terms of organizing um, the tournament, right? So it's it's definitely a new thing they're trying to, to implement. All right, so again here, some highlights of some of the things they can do. I'm going to skip over this. Some of this is marketing, but, you know, you, you, you guys, I, I, I do want you guys, uh, those of you guys that are interested, definitely read through this. Here's a complicated way of how how their economic model works all right and i'll go through some of this uh, in the white paper uh, and i'll sum it up really easily for you guys okay um so let's let's go down here and look at the team okay now i will say this most of you guys watching this will never heard of these people okay for for most part they're from russia and they haven't really worked in big uh, blockchain companies that you guys may all bring a wealth of knowledge and they have a lot of experience in esports and gaming which is what you want to see now this roadmap is a little bit different and I'll show you the one that's in the white paper because that's much better this is kind of roadmap in terms of how much money they're making and what kind of um, development they can do based on the money they collect but that's a little bit different all right so let me scroll through here the token sale details okay so overall they're going to have 1.3 billion tokens. Um, not too bad. Uh, so the tokens are L LUC. It is Ethereum based. Uh, they're going to have a hard, hard cap of 30 million. Um, the pre-sale starts tomorrow. They're selling each uh, LUC token for 5 cents. They're going to accept these kind of currencies for it. Soft cap at 3 million. They say if you don't reach 3 million, they will just refund everyone and close the project. So they are looking for at least 3 million to get started. Minimum amount to get in is 0.1 F, which is only $100. Um, so that all looks pretty good. How they go use it, over 62%. Over 62% is sold in open market, which is great. I love companies that actually distribute more than 50% because now, you're starting to see a company get greedy. They're holding on more and more. Um, and some companies are only selling like 30% or 40% of their total distribution. And that's not what you want to see. You don't want to see the team control so much. So selling by selling 62.5, I think they're they're being generous. So that's really good. They have some reserve, reserve funds, which is fine. Founders and projects which is 10%. Partners of the project, advisory board, and bounty. So this is all pretty standard. This 62.5% is actually a pro in my mind. And then how they go distribute it, you know, they actually break it down pretty well. They even break it down like legal fees, outsourcing, CDN maintenance fees. You know, most of these aren't broken down on um, and a lot of ICOs. If you, if you see it, they just kind of clump it together like operations fee or something. Um, they don't actually break it down to this level, which is really good. And uh, um, it's good to know where the money's going, right? Um, so here's a, here's a short FAQ and I think this really boils it down because sometimes when you look at a project, you don't quite understand or you get it and you're like, well, why do you need this? Right? Like the biggest question people will look at with this ICO is why do you need another Twitch or why, why would I use this over Twitch? Right? And that's the very, very first question. <laughs> And they put up here and they explain it really is because of the way they're incentivizing both viewers and uh, streamers now I'm gonna mention something that they don't really hit hard on which I feel like is a mistake on their part they actually have a hidden gem that they're not talking about a lot and I will bring that up basically he's the chief bus chief business D development director all right so she was also working at 
this agency, which uh, this one's not so much uh, internet or gaming, but here uh, she was <clears throat> she was head of business development at Wargaming.net. Obviously, that is a gaming company, and she she dealt a lot with esports and media. Um, before that, uh, she worked, you know, for. She worked for this company, Internet Retail Solutions, which did licensing for Angry Birds, which is, you know, I think most of you guys have heard of Angry Birds, a very popular game from iOS and Android. Um, but so it seems like she also has a lot of experience because she was at least with Wargaming for four and a half years and then this. So, um, so yeah, so she also has experience. And then let's look at this person, uh, Orkan. I hope I'm not butchering that too much. This is the CTO, and he's been CTO and project lead and CEO for a lot of places. Um, looking at his last previous job, he's a CTO, um, and that was for a brand new blockchain powered payment product. Okay, so blockchain technology, which is good. Then he was a technical manager of this company. Um, I don't, I don't know what company that is. Let's see. So he managed all aspects of operations and engineering. Um, he led, uh, led, yeah, he led hosting the cloud. So basically, this guy is just true, like CTO, someone that has gotten his hands dirty in terms of leading teams, leading infrastructure operations. So not so much on gaming and online, but definitely he's had experience as a CTO, a true CTO that's led teams, led projects. And that's what you want to see, right? So those are like the top guys that I, I looked at. And then if you go through their page for their advisory board, now some of these guys, again, advisory board, these aren't the biggest advisors that you hear of, right? It's not, it's not like the biggest blockchain guys that you you hear like the ethereum founders or or uh roger veer or any of those guys or charlie shrem like those guys that you don't you don't, you know you hear about a lot but not not here but if you look at these um the advisors they're pretty impressive too like this canyon which i've never heard of before but he he's involved a lot of uh tv um imba tv Azubi TV. So I'm assuming that he's involved in a lot of, you know, content. With that said, let me get started. Uh, so what is Play to Live? Looking at just the screen right now, you got you get a sense of the idea that this is uh, with esports. Okay. Um, as you guys know, in Asia and also in Russia, many parts of Europe, um, and now it's getting more popular in the U.S. Esports is huge and it's growing. Okay, Amazon paid almost a billion dollars for Twitch. Those of you guys that know Twitch, it's all about e esport streaming, and that's what Play to Live is all about. It's creating a decentralized version or platform for e streaming, esports streaming. So they're go they're go go head on with Twitch, or at least that's what they want to do. Now, um, so what? what separates them really right why do you need another twitch or why do you need a decentralized twitch okay so their biggest thing is they're going to differentiate themselves through incentives for the first time they're incentivizing viewers okay those that aren't even streaming anything those that are just simply watching they're giving five different ways for viewers to get incentivized okay so that's huge that's a big thing first in the industry second thing is for the streamers they're making it a lot more easier for a streamer to also get paid for their content so they say that they have up to 11 ways to incentivize a streamer to be on, to use to use the platform versus five that twitch offers okay so that's the biggest thing that they're advertising and why they're different because using blockchain technology they're able to use their tokens and incentivize both the users and the streamers and also be able to convert that into fiat currency that people can withdraw out so it's it's definitely a new thing they're utilizing these tokens as a utility um and they think it's gold just 
change the whole landscape and really become a true competitor to uh, to Twitch. Okay, um, so let's go through the website. Let's go look at the one pager, the white, the white paper, uh, the team members, and kind of the token detail. So let's look through, and then toward that, end, I'll give you a recap and my overall uh, rating. All right, so on this page is pretty clear right up front. Okay, you, you you look at this, you know what it's about, which is really good. Okay, I've I've seen a lot of ICOs, I've seen a lot of web pages. You go on there and you're looking at it, you really have no idea what you're looking at or what they're trying to do, what they're trying to sell, what 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 they're in. It's pretty simple. Okay, they tell you it's a streaming platform right in the first sentence, streaming platform for gamers and